There we go. Okay, go ahead. So the couple that I'm seeing, I've seen them two times now in person, and then we're going to move to online. Um, okay. They came in. This is the couple I talked about that came in for cheating. Um, so the male was cheating on the the female client. Um, so it was all like texting. So no physical cheating, but uh, mm -hmm. texting, and she found out. So the struggle I'm having is we had our second session. And they really feel like all we're doing, like they've had these conversations, they've talked about all this. So they feel like they're just repeating what they've already talked about with themselves, like between them, between each other. So they're, they're saying that that's what it feels like in the session as well. Yeah, like towards the end, they're like, I'm like, okay, like I'll, I'll do a check in towards the end. Like, how was it today? Um, what was it like for you? And they're like, it was good. It's just like, we feel like, especially for the female client, like I've already said all this stuff to him. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a little tricky for me to know where to go. Um, and as well as like, we did a bit of um, what you and I talked about in our, in our last supervision around like having him really hear what's going on for her, like, and kind of creating that safe space, hopefully in the end. Um, and we, we talked about that and I noticed like there was a wall that came up. And so we, we talked about kind of like, she's not able to let it in because it might just happen again. The wall then, is the wall to share or is the wall to let in positive response? Sorry, sorry, Ophir, what'd you say? Yeah, so the wall you're experiencing, yeah. is it in dropping down and being able to share or is the wall in being able to receive a, a corrective sort of response from him? It's being able to receive the like a corrective, like that response. And then also the wall is kind of difficult to bring down a bit, like almost like she can talk about it and very like autopilot, if that makes sense. Like it's really hard to get in touch mm -hmm. with like the emotions, so to speak. And what was brought up. Mm, so, uh, so it's both then. So when yeah. she's sharing, is she sharing in a in like in a very primary vulnerable state when she's sharing with him? No, I would say secondary. Mm. Okay. So so there you go, right? So that's that's uh, makes sense. Her uh, what why her feedback is the way it is because she's able already to share secondary with him, yeah. right? Um, so it's not different. So I would spend more time on helping her drop down more. And to, so I would basically stay with her until both you and him in the room can feel that, like the pain that she went through. Like she needs to really be in that pain. And if there's blocks that you're noticing come up, um, when you go really slow and are kind of, you know, in her experience, you can start to notice these blocks. And you can, you know, make friends with these blocks, as I often like to say, where you can understand where they came from, right? Because generally speaking, when someone's been hurt, when they can't uh, heal from that relatively quickly, when the environment is such that it's a healthy environment to be able to heal from that, yeah, of course, if he's not willing, that's different. But in a healthy environment, generally we recover from something like that relatively quickly. Um, and the cheating happened, I, but I know it happened twice, right? It wasn't just once, right? So that yeah. also makes sense. But generally when the healing doesn't occur, it's often piggybacking on prior trauma in her life, like prior betrayal. So I would wanna get to the point where the feeling either the 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 if if there's a block there's probably a uh, a good reason why the block is there so even if you can have the block be an experience where you're talking to the block you can ask is there a time earlier in your life where you could like i wouldn't call it just a block but the resistance around it like get into like what's coming up around so we're trying to get to pain, like the deep pain that happens when you feel betrayed. And if there's a block there, 
that's an experience too that she, that she can become aware of. So open that up as much as possible as a, as a form of resistance to dropping underneath it. Then once you have that, ask, is there a time earlier in your life where you can remember this feeling, this experience of, of uh, wanting to trust, but then something comes in the way of that, right? And you might discover that like maybe something happened with mom, dad, sibling, something earlier in her life where because she trusted it, it, it didn't work out, right? Like it led to more pain. So she needs to talk about the fears around letting this, this, uh, this down, right? And you need to really validate that it's there for a reason. Like it's like, but you discover what that reason is together. So of course you have this resistance because if you don't have this resistance and you trust again, like, or this resistance protects you from, from opening up and, and feeling this pain again. So of course it's there, but at the same time, one part of you really wants to trust. You see your partner right here, right now saying, I want to be there for you, whatever he's doing. And then you've got this alternate experience is just saying, don't trust, don't trust this other side of you. Don't trust. It's going to leave. So you, you kind of hold these two things together and she can share uh, the, um, the resistance to going under if she can't go under and then you and her can process it together. Maybe that turns into an enactment where he can help as well. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of it might need her to look at him and to see that he's really engaged, really leaning forward, that kind of thing before she goes, yeah, this person's not going to do that to me again. I, I want, like, I want that side that is wanting to heal, wanting to reconnect and uh, heal from the betrayal. I want that side to win. I'm just really scared. And she can, she can share that as a, as an experience. Mm -hmm. So that's that. And if you can do that and you can have a good processing, then maybe she gets access to the pain. Right. Okay. And the thing that came up last week that kind of stood out to me around that was like, she, female client feels that her partner like will try for a little bit and then it kind of goes away mm -hmm. and then she mentioned she doesn't know um if it'll ever be enough like how much she she mentioned like I don't know what if and when it'll ever be enough to feel um like she, she mentioned kind of she said not being obsessed, but kind of like obsessed with her, like wanting him to be um, like obsessed with her in the sense of like, just it truly in love with her. And she doesn't know when it'll ever be enough that she'll feel that way. Yeah, I mean, so it's it speaks to um, probably an underlying, you know, insecurity. Uh, pursuers yeah. do have often that attachment unmet need in in their early upbringing and they just feel unlovable right and so that makes sense that she's saying it doesn't matter what he does I'll always feel unlovable and the onus then isn't like you can uh, logically take that to its uh, logical uh, end which is it doesn't matter what he does right the 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 it's it's going to be about uh it's almost like representative of this um of, of something that probably was there earlier, even before the cheating, is that that was always there. And it's it's like, there's a parallel there between trust and trusting that you love me, right? Like that I'm enough, that I'm lovable in and of myself. Because um, pursuers often grow up where in a, in a world where they're, they're loved or they're reinforced or they're given attention for what they do and not who they are. So they uh, they have this underlying belief that they're just not lovable, they're they're yeah. they're not given unconditional right like love, and uh, and it's not enough that now their partner unconditionally loves them because they can't let that in. They can't really they don't put themselves out there in the way that they did when they were growing up, 
and mm -hmm. got rejected for that. And so they're just wired to only get reinforced for, ah, they love me for this. They respond when I'm angry. They respond when I'm doing this. And so it's it just reinforces that worldview. So the only way to get around that, I mean, in, in stage two EFT, you, you really get to that lifelong insecurity, that lifelong, like, I'm just not lovable, right? And, and it gets really, really deep. But, um, but until then, I mean, you might be close to that, right? Um, uh, around this global message, right? But in stage one, we're really focusing on it in relation to individual moments, right? Like this is what happens to me. This is the thought that's happening right now, not this global thing, this global like uh, uh, exposure of what my life, my life has been like, what our whole relationship has been like, what my whole life has been like. And um, then being able to very directly because they feel safe, ask for their needs, ask, you know, not, not from a, this is what you need to do place, but from a, you know, this is how I walk around in the world. And, and, and this is what my experience of you is. And, and what I'm needing is, you know, uh, it could look something like, uh, you know, I need to be able to come to you and tell you that I'm alone and I don't feel lovable and I need to you to just hold me or I need you, right? But it has to be a to some extent a mix of this is what I need to do and this is what I uh, want in return. Okay. But but they have to be at a place where they kind of know that that the their partner will be able to say yes to those things. Yeah. I think in her case, she's definitely not there yet. Um yeah. Yeah, because like we we talked a little bit about um like she mentioned being able to like tell him like when she needs like you know just needs to feel more loved or needs this and she said he'll the thing is that she has no problem doing it but he'll try and then it just stops after a couple of days yeah and that's where the what uh, you know, what stops him responding he just doesn't put as much effort in is what she feels like he, he's not um like she'll she'll mention what she needs or like what she wants and he'll try and then she feels like it it just stops after a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So go back to the the difference between the difference between like a level a uh, stage one asking for your needs and a stage two it's very different. So she's doing it from a stage one perspective where it's 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 like almost like it's not about her it's just asking I need this thing and so it can become like his experience might be that it's a chore or it's nagging or it's this yeah. kind of thing. So what she feels is probably correct in a way. She doesn't know how the way she's asking for something, how it lands for him because either she's just not aware or he's not sharing it or a mix of the two, right? Yeah. Um, so that's a stage one, you know, uh, cycle that you can, that you can, you can open up for sure. Um, so that they like stage one is all about understanding, right? you want to you have a an implicit belief about what the other person's doing that's not accurate and so by by engaging in like a clear uh, experience of this is what happens for me when you do this you get you, you both the, the both sides if you could both do that um get to learn what's happening and that it's different than their belief that's it's almost like transparent stage one's all about transparency and getting on the same page emotionally, understanding what happens in these moments. And ultimately you can't move to stage two until they're able to do this on their own at home. Mm -hmm. Consistently enough that like, okay, they aren't misperceiving each other anymore. Okay. Cause I feel, I feel almost like just from my observation is like, it's almost like she wants to skip stage one and like go straight to stage two of just feeling like, like she doesn't like it just I feel the not irritation but kind of in, like in other thing. words and in, 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 it's funny because I hear that a lot in other words they want to just rip the band-aid off and, and skip the hard work right yeah and it's the problem is is that you can't go and it, it, I would validate it it makes sense like 
we yeah. just want to get to the finish line. But you, I, I'll use like an analogy. It's like you want to run the race and just be at the finish line and not go through all the work. Yeah, of course. Who wants to run the race and have it be grueling? But part of it is, is, is you don't get the exercise if you don't run the race. You yeah. don't overcome the thing if you don't go through it. You can't yeah. walk around it. Yeah, our society is all about taking the, the magic bullet pill, whatever that will, will allow us not to do the hard work. But it's um, it's uh, almost like we'll use, like it's a natural science, it's, it's physics. It, like love and 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 relationships you can't you can't cheat it you can't cheat the the process you wherever you're at you have to do the work to get to the other side and everyone's at different places and uh things i was just telling byron too risks are not like risk taking is not about we take equal risks um and we we they look the same they look different because you both of you are at different places balance means you take one risk and from where you're at in your comfort zone and window of tolerance and then you do the same thing they'll look very different but the risk taking the risk based on where you're currently at the level of effort to overcome that that discomfort will be somewhat equal because your job is to push them not outside their comfort zone but to still feel and share something uncomfortable and so it's equal risk taking from that standpoint. It's hard work. It's the same hard work, but it looks different because you're both at different places and, and pursuers and withdrawers have different challenges. So it's like people think it's not fair. I have to do this. And but they don't see how hard it is for the other person. Like a pursuer's uh, difficulty is not the withdrawer's difficulty, right? And vice versa. Pursuer has no problem sharing their feelings, right? But they have a problem sharing in a vulnerable way. A withdrawer generally can share their feelings, but not to their partner because they they don't feel safe to share it to their partner. But within themselves, yeah. maybe to other people, they they have no problem feeling it. They're introverts, right? They can feel their what's going on, but they just need to feel safe to be able to be shored up, to be able to share it um, because they're afraid of how it's going to land, right? And um, so it's different, right? Um, so it's like it's like softening versus shoring up means. I have to get in touch with it versus I have to feel safe, right? So getting in touch versus feeling safe, you know, uh, and, and pursuers generally like, oh yeah, I have no problem sharing my feelings, but they're usually just connected to their secondary, not their primary. Yeah. yeah so. and, and I can see that now, like just observing our past two sessions, like they, like she mentions like, no, we have no problem like talking about these things. Um, we've talked about these before. And I think that's where the, kind of I want to say like almost like irritation that we're not getting ahead is what it maybe feels like for them mm -hmm. yeah on the one hand she's saying I want to take a deeper risk but but her body is saying uh there's resistance right yeah. so yeah when she zooms out yeah we've had these conversations before we're we're I'm not I'm not taking enough of a risk for it to feel uh, meaningful or like it's significant like progress mm -hmm. um but then her mouth her mind might be saying i don't want to do it right like the that resistance is coming up if you listen to that part then you're not going to get the work done and um it it's going to be the easier path this is why often we can't really listen to what someone's saying on the surface we have to really um be able to either read through it or ask feedback like you're doing and then at the end of the session you go okay she really does want to take uh, bigger risks. She's just scared to. So we have to kind of uh, do it in levels. Okay. And it will feel like um, it's effective when it feels uncomfortable. If, if what she's able to share is not uncomfortable, then there isn't really risk taking. So you have to ask yourself, where's the risk for them? for her, for whoever is the one that you're working with and, and doing the enactment. Is it hard for them to do this? I always ask, you know, would it like, what would it be like to share with this person? If it's easy, we haven't gone deep enough. Oh yeah, I can do it, no problem. That's not good, because that means it's not yeah. really a challenge. Um, but sometimes they say it, not because of that. Sometimes they say that because the way, that, what, what they actually are sharing with you and what they're thinking of sharing with the other person are not the same. Like 
they go into a different level when they're about to share with the other person. So you won't really know unless you really watch during the enactment. Because uh, if I'm not sure, I'll ask, what was that like for you to share? Bef like way before I check in with the, the receiver. And I, and, 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 and I look for something, right? Like flickers in their eyes or something to know that it was a risk. I need to know it was a risk, right? Um, or I, I need to see some, some difficulty in, in them sharing, right? I need to, I wanna hear something like, yeah, like I'm not sure how it went. I wanna know how it was like for them. Okay, good. That means they're putting themselves out there to some extent, right? It needs yeah. to be a leap of faith or else like not a huge necessarily leap of faith, but a leap of faith in that they don't know what the outcome will be. Okay. okay. If they think it's gonna go really well, then, then they're not really taking a risk. Okay. Yeah, it seems like we're in like secondary like emotions and we're not able, I think there was maybe one time that really sticks out to me in terms of last week where there was a little bit of, I think, discomfort on both ends. Um, the male client mentioned something about like kind of the, where the cheating came from, so to speak, in mm -hmm. kind of both, both scenarios. And he mentioned I don't remember what he said per se, but he, when he said it, I noticed her reaction and I, I kind of called it out and she was a little confused. And then when I did call it out, she, that's where she was like, yeah, it just hurt. It hurt to hear just around, um, what he said, like it was almost, not a shock per se, but it kind of just that truthful piece, like piece of where it kind of came from. Um, instead of just saying I'm sorry and like coming to therapy for it, so to speak, that that piece of truth I noticed was really hard for her to kind of like not let in, but I think it just it hit a little for him being like open mm -hmm. and vulnerable. So I think I think this you, if you know if you know did you ask her about that like yeah because your suspicion's probably correct yeah uh, and and so what was it like to ask her about um. For me, it was like, it was okay to ask. I think just because I'm used to kind of calling out, I don't want to say calling out, but kind of picking up on those things and mentioning them, like bringing them to the room instead of just letting them letting them slide, I guess. Because I think those mm -hmm. are the important pieces. Um, I think it took her back a little bit. And I've noticed that even in other sessions, like with other couples, like it's just like, either they're aware of the reaction or it's like they they they're not until I call it out, and then they're like then they kind of go that touch deeper of mm -hmm. like this is where it's coming exactly. from. Exactly. Yeah. So I think it was more so new for her for me to do that. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. So probably if you were to ask her what that was like after that one piece, she'd say, "Yeah, that was different. Yeah, that was good." Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's good. You're otherwise it stays like a theory or a hypothesis in your head, and you don't know. This way, you get to yeah. do that perception check. Am I reading it right? And the benefit of uh, into like assisting and integrating that and giving it a name, right? Um, yeah. Otherwise, it's just this like raw experience, and they go back later and they don't know they don't know how to slot it in in their brain. Yeah. So I think going into our next session um, this week, it'll have to definitely be, I think, holding into those primary emotions. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a lot of resistance I find for both. So I think that's what's a little difficult is um, not comparing, but I think my other, I have other couples, I think that are just a bit more, not vocal, but just like they're pr like less pretty, trauma probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, less reserved and quiet. So I think that's, what's a tad different. Um, right. For me. Yeah. So, so if you, if you slow down and work with their resistance, then, you know, like what you just said, by calling it out, uh, it's not just about that integration piece. Part of it is too, like, so what was that like? I noticed there was like, it was hard for you. I noticed something in your face, like almost like it was hard for you to let in. And then, then you can open that up. And then that assists in, in letting it in too, or it, you know, yeah. and also gives him an insight into how her brain works because he might give the perfect response and, and her not letting it in 
and the thing you notice, he might be noticing it too. And he might be labeling it as she, uh, like, again, I'm doing the, the, I'm working so hard to give her what she wants and she's not letting it in. This way, by being able to uh, reflect it as a mixed experience, like, oh, this is what you wanted to hear. But a part of you is, it's, it seems like, is having a hard time letting it in. Can we talk to both sides? Can we just try to understand both sides, right? So if we start with the good side, okay, you 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 saw him, he shared vulnerably, it's what you wanted. What's that like? You open that up, right? It felt really good, blah, 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 blah. Okay, good. So we help expand that part, sit with it, open it up, reinforce that. And he can see, oh, I did the right thing. And then we can go to the other side. Where's that side coming from? Is it about what like what is actually happening as he's sharing with you this remorse for whatever it is um what are you actually attending to what is that side actually attending to right yeah um or like a part of you is attending to multiple things there's so much stimuli right so when you're attending to this part of how he's sharing uh it's a good response it makes you kind of be able to accept it and it feels good and and, and, and healing and trusting and fear goes down or whatever else and then the other side it's when he said this part when he said this something came up for me or maybe it's not how he said anything maybe it's just my mind remembered last month when he did this so you were so you that part you were you were kind of checked out you weren't actually there hearing what he was saying instead where was your attention it was some memory flooded in and, and okay, so maybe that's a way to cope. Your mind goes to the, your attention goes to the past and it's hard for you to stay present. So even though withdrawal you shared perfectly, she went to another place, nothing to do with how you shared, everything to do with, again, this coping of, it's like this resistance of letting it in. And yeah. part of it, again, it could be good. It, it could be functional, maybe not functional in the sense that it's what you want, like what you what you're here for, but functional in the sense that you can understand where it comes from. It came from this place of, of wanting to protect you from future pain, of bracing for this third cheating, fourth cheating, right? Like, yeah, it makes sense why it's there. Like you find a way for it to make sense. It's happened twice, it could happen again. But of course, if we just believe that and brace for it, it's actually more likely maybe not to happen again, but more likely for the relationship to end and fizzle and whatever. So it's like it works against you. It guarantees the result you don't want. But this side opens up. Yeah, it, it opens up a possibility of pain, but it also opens up like healing and trying to understand and why why this cheating happened in the first place. You don't get that with the, the second option. Yeah, I think I have an idea now, just like how to go into a little bit, because I think that's what held me, not held me back, but it, it did, I guess, maybe shock me in a little way, just because I was like, I get what you're saying. Like, I get it feels repetitive. Like, you're just filling, you're talking about the same thing and filling me in. And I know that the first session was typically like that, just coming in for, you know, get an idea. So I think it helps yeah. to. It's, it's great that you asked it because if you don't yeah. ask it, you might be thinking this is the pace they want to go at. But now yeah. she's kind of telling you, I want to go deeper. I want to challenge yeah. myself, right? So yeah, if you don't ask for feedback, you, you never know, right? Yeah. And so now you know, it's kind of like, yeah, you have permission to go deeper. And even if you, you get resistance, that doesn't mean that she doesn't want to go deeper. It just means let's work with this resistance, right? Yeah, I'm glad I asked just because it gives me an idea of like where to where to go or where they wanted to go. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I have a better idea now going into. Yeah, yeah, into it's crucial. It's crucial either to do like the, the couple's rating form or to ask because um, and to do it consistently, at least the first five, six sessions where yeah. it's a new couple, you're not sure. Yeah, you want to you want to make sure that they're, you know, that they're getting what they came for out of it. And um you know, and yeah, there's no, no, no better way than to ask. And sometimes people will say the thing that like the polite thing, and uh, you're really just looking for feedback on how to do better. Yeah. And, and I'm glad I asked because it gives me an idea now. Um, I just, and I've like, usually I'll get feedback of like, it was uncomfortable or it was like, you know, I wish there was more time or I, this was really hard right. for me to say. So having this one was very different for me. But it gives me an idea of now, okay, like she's, they're ready to go deeper. 
but there's, I think there's going to be resistance, but just working with that resistance is going to be. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. You don't, the worst thing you can do is like, just kind of assume that you know what's going on. And then at the end, just get yeah. some kind of feedback. Once the therapy is done, you can't do anything about it at that point. Yeah. Okay. That helps me. Thank you. I really mm -hmm. appreciate it. Um, yeah, it's it's actually the same in sales. Uh, the I forget the saying, but you know, if you're doing a good job, yeah, you'll hear you you. If you're doing an okay job, you won't hear about it from anyone. If you're doing a great job, you will. If you're doing a bad job, you're not usually going to hear about it. But if you do a horrible job, um, yeah. from some people, you will hear about it. But that's not a bad thing. It's like it just means that um, the, from the ones you do hear, you have to really cherish because that's what's going to allow you to make the shifts that will prevent future people from from experiencing the same thing right yeah. so it's like they're taking their time to give you feedback not to just shit on you but to actually um help you in a way yeah 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 i think yeah it helps it gives me an idea um like i'm glad i asked for that feedback i think i was i i had that sensation or kind of that mm. that feeling or suspicion that that's kind of right. what was going to be coming up just because I felt there was something there. Um, mm -hmm. But now it kind of gives me that in a way, almost like that welcoming of, okay, we can go deeper because for some, they don't mm -hmm. like that's too soon. And I do know that for like, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. like for other couples, it might just be too soon for them. It's too mm -hmm. nerve wracking. So it's a nice, at the same time, it's a nice invitation to be like, okay, we're, we can go deeper if they're ready and they exactly. want to yeah. yeah that's right yeah on the flip side when clients say i want to go slow or whatever we don't uh we it's not that we don't want to honor that but we want to see like what is their body really ready for not yeah. what they're because they have people have an idea of what things are and in reality uh, and what where their body's at is not not in the same the same place that they think they're at right yeah. and especially when they're saying that before they've done anything right well they've never done couples counseling or if they have have they done EFD or and if, even if they've done that have they done it with you right so yeah. you want to listen to their experience more so than anything that they're like content wise saying yeah I think that's good to remember just going in like um like yeah. kind of what, what's their body saying more so than the content yeah yeah by Byron Byron learned that the hard way <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a good example to remember though um just because even like even other couples um that I'm seeing like the content that they say and then when we get into the session and noticing those things it's very I see what they're saying but it's also very different of what their what their body is saying like in those moments when we're exactly 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 yeah that's why in that um first individual session I like that question of like so what do you think needs to happen in order it's a different than what is your goal like what do you think needs to happen in order for um your goals to be met essentially to fix this problem and uh, i like that question because it gives me an idea of like how they conceptualize what they think needs to happen is it like is it is i need to change we both need to change or it's like just they need to change or like how they see the problem um yeah. you know or how they answer that question doesn't always tell you but sometimes it does like the way they answer the question versus what they're actually the words that they're using yeah yeah I think I appreciate it thank you Ophir it gives me it just it, it kind of helps me get an idea of now where to go this week and kind of what came, what came yeah. up and I was kind of I was really struggling I was like okay yeah. where do I go then mm -hmm. so. yeah yeah you can be thrown off like if it's the first time hearing something like that sure but yeah you've got you've got some next steps there and hope yeah, the next session it. goes well and you get the opposite feedback yeah thank you for that i appreciate it no problem all right we'll see you next week all right take care all right take care bye